people welcome back to some more card reviews so today we are looking at probably one of the most interesting trap cards to come out in a cool minute today we are looking at transmission gear the transmission gear is a normal trap card that reads during damage calculation if a monster you control battles an opponent's monster play a game of rock paper scissors yes people rock paper scissors paper rock scissors rock papers you know all of it yes rock paper scissors with your opponent if the result is a draw, play again. Generally, how you play. Rock, paper, scissors. You keep playing until someone wins. And make the losing player banish their battling monster face down. So, this card, super gimmicky. Super gimmicky. Really, the only appealing thing about it is the whole playing rock, paper, scissors thing. If you if that wasn't there, this card would just be another, bleh, nah, who cares, you know? Who gives a shit? We have cards like this all the time, you know? But... It's interesting because you get to play Rock, Paper, Scissors, but does that make it a good card? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this card is actually really bad. Really bad. Don't even think about playing this, you know? It's it's really luck-based. It really is. Now, you could be the most skilled, uh, you know, Rock, Paper, Scissors person in the world, and, you know, you never lost a game. But, you know, hypothetically, there's a chance that you could lose. And, you know, unlike other cards, like, for example, another cute color we could probably compare this to is kind of fairy box. You know, you attack me, we flip a coin. Oh, you got it wrong. Oh, monster's back into your hand, you know. But at least with fairy box, nothing happens to my hand. I play this card. If I lose that game of rock, paper, scissors, instead of going even with my one transmission gear versus your one monster getting banned face down, I lose my one transmission gear and my monster gets banished down. So I went neg two. I mean, it's, it's really risky. It's really risky. Now, it's cool that you get to banish the monster face down, you know. Uh, I mean, that's one of the best ways that you can actually have a monster. I mean, the only way you could really, like, grab it back would be, like, Omega putting it back to the graveyard. But then the monster face down is pretty good. But is it worth the risk, you know? There's many other battle-esque traps that pretty much can guarantee to get the job done. You know, Mirror Force is at three. Deep Prison, Sakuracho, or all the other Mirror Forces, Drowning and Quaking and Storm, you know? So there's many other battle traps that are not only better than this car because they can possibly handle multiple monsters, but their effects are guaranteed, you know? I don't have to fucking activate Mirror Force, then roll a die, and if, you know, the result of the die is a one or a six, then my Mirror Force doesn't go through. I mean, this is pretty much equates to the same thing, you know? Like, I want to handle this one monster. I want to do a one-for-one with my opponent, my one trap for their one monster. I would rather play deeper than I would rather play Sakuretsu Armor, damn, you know? And while, you know, the positioning of the monster isn't as good, because, you know, I'd much rather have the monster be banished face down than face off with D-Person or destroyed and sent to the graveyard with Sakuretsu Armor. At least those cards are guaranteed. Now, I like this card for its gimmick, the whole, you know, playing rock, paper, scissors thing, but uh, it would have been interesting, a lot more interesting, if this was a continuous trap, if you could continuously play mind games with your opponent, you know? Uh, similar to Fairy Box, you know? With Fairy Box, if you you flip a Fairy Box, your opponent taps into it, you flip a coin, you know, and your and their opponent's monster ends up back in the hand, they're going to stop for a little while. They're going to they're gonna be like, hold up, hold up, and play some, a little bit of mind games. You know, if this was a continuous trap, and every single time one of my monsters battled my opponent's monster, we had to play a game of rock, paper, scissors, then, you know what, I would be all for that, because that's just mind games at that point. At that point, they wouldn't even want to attack. And the interesting thing about this card over something fair about it says, if a monster you control battles in a post-monster, it means that if I go after you, then we play rock, paper, scissors, I win, your monster's banished, the field has changed, redeclare, you know? So... It would be totally interesting if, you know, you had one monster. So this is a continuous trap, you know, and you had one monster in the field. Your opponent had five monsters on the field. And you're like, attack, rock, paper, scissors. I win. Banish that monster. The field has changed. Attack, rock, paper, scissors. I win. And, I mean, it's not very likely. I mean, if you're the most skilled rock, paper, scissors player in the world, then, hey, more power to you. But it would be interesting that if I could take my one monster, attack into every single one of your monsters because the field has changed, I redeclare. We play rock, paper, scissors. I win every single game, and I banish your entire field, all your monsters face down because I won rock, paper, scissors. Fuck the skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! I won because of rock, paper, scissors, all right? So I think that would be hilarious if this is actually a continuous shot. But I could see how that would be an issue if that was true. And if it was, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a continuous trap that can only be like you can only use the effect of transmission gear once per turn so yeah anyway uh that's really all i have to say it's very gimmicky it's cute um i wouldn't you know try to play it or anything like that 
but, I mean, if you want to be cute and play something that involves something outside of Yu-Gi-Oh, which we don't generally see too often, then uh, more power to you. But as a, as a standalone card, taking this seriously 100%, it's not a good card. So that's my opinion about it. So anyway, tell me what you guys think about Transmission Gear in the comment section below. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Uh, of course, we'll be back next week with some more cards to look at. We definitely got to look at that new uh, Ring 4 generic back row popper because you guys know how much I love back row popping. I really do. So we're definitely going to look at that. Uh, so if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, that bell for notifications. And I will see you guys next week with some more cards to look at. All right, people. Thanks for watching.